Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 1.2, Evaluate and Simplify Algebraic Expressions. Our learning targets for today, I can find the powers of numbers, including negative numbers, understanding that the answer may be positive or negative. I can use the order of operations. We'll talk about please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to solve expressions. I can evaluate expressions for given variables. And I can simplify expressions by combining like terms. So first thing we're talking about, what is a power? So when we talk about a power, we have two parts. The first part is the base, and the second part is the exponent. The exponent will tell you then how many times the base is multiplied together. So in this case, since it's 8 to the 4th, that means it is 8 times 8 times 8. Now, we don't want to hammer keys on our calculator and go 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. We can if it's a small exponent, but for if it's a larger one, we want to use the caret key. It looks like this, like an up arrow. And it is right above the divided by symbol on your TI graphing calculators. If you are having problems finding it, ask me in class and I will gladly help you. Now, you do not need to write this out. So like 4 to the third, for example, it means 4 times 4 times 4, but you simply can put 4 to the third power in your calculator and hit enter and get an answer of 64. I would like you to pause the video and try each of the remaining five. Please be careful of parentheses. If you see parentheses on the problem, use them on your calculator because we're going to talk about that here in a moment. All right, so hopefully when you calculated 2 to the 3rd, you got 8. Negative 2 to the 4th, you got negative 16. The quantity, so parentheses, so we would say negative 2 quantity to the 4th is positive 16. And so here we see the importance of parentheses. As you can see what I've written out here, when it's negative of 2 to the 4th power, it's really saying negative or, in other words, negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Because that negative, would not being in a parentheses, it's telling you your answer will be negative. By the second one being in parentheses, it's saying it's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So as we can see with these two examples here, the parentheses matter. But Mr. A, I look at the next set with the negative of 3 to the third versus negative 3 quantity to the third, I get negative 27 either way. So it doesn't matter. Here's the deal. When my exponent is even, like we see here, 4 is an even exponent, then it will make a difference between whether your answer is positive or negative. If my exponent is odd, it doesn't make a difference. Word to the wise, if there are parentheses in the problem, just use them when you're putting it in your calculator. It will save you so much when it comes to making errors and stuff like that for accuracy. All right, order of operations. I was taught, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I've heard some teachers are using the acronym GEMS. So if you're familiar with GEMS, it's the same thing. Please represents parentheses or grouping symbols. Excuse is exponents. My dear, we know as multiplication and division. And then Aunt Sally, we know, is adding and subtracting. And again, we group 3 and 4 together because, remember, we said division is multiplying by the reciprocal. So really, division and multiplying are just multiplying. Adding and subtracting are grouped together because we know subtracting is adding the opposite. So these two are grouped together. And so when we are looking at these problems, we need to follow the order of operations. Now, I'm going to do this problem two different ways. You choose how you want to write it in your notes, and then do whatever method you want. 
So typically what we would do is you would say, okay, I have parentheses, so I need to do the parentheses first. So that means I've got 1 plus 7 squared times, and then my parentheses become 2. And then I would say, okay, next, do I have exponents? Yes, so then I need to do the exponent. All right, next on my list, um, multiplying and dividing. Do I have multiplying and dividing? Yes. Well, then I need to do that. So 49 times 2. And then do I have adding and subtracting? Yep. So then I add and subtract this, and I get that it equals 99. Again, the multiplying and dividing happens first. So if, if you got 50, that would be where your mistake was. All right. So that's one way to do it. Another way that a, a, a colleague or a friend of mine showed me, let me move that up a little bit, is whenever I see adding and subtracting outside of parentheses, I know I'm going to do that last, so I'm going to split the problem up. And it doesn't really do much for me in this problem, but it will in later ones. And what I'm going to do is, since I know adding and subtracting are last, what I can do is break the problem into smaller pieces. Here, there's only the one piece, the one out front. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing. I got parentheses here, so then I've got 7 squared times, so 49 times 2. And then I only put numbers on the bottom once I have completely finished. Right? I'm going to want in the videos and stuff like that in class, I will show you this bottom method just so you get more exposure to it. I would like you to pause the video and try each of these next two problems and check back with me. All right, so on the middle one here, you can see I saw there was an ad, uh, adding or subtracting. I saw a subtracting sign between the 6 and the 4. So I drew that bar down, bringing that subtraction. I've now split the problem into two parts. In the first part, I can see it's just 3 times 6, which is 18. On the right part, I got some more work to do. So I go, I have an exponent, so that happens first. So 4 squared is 16. Then I go 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then when I get to the bottom, I always just go left to right. So 18 minus 8 equals 10. Very similar going on here in the last problem. In the first part, I split it, you know, with the plus here. I get my first part is just 4 times 7, so 28. And then I have 4 divided by 2 squared. Well, the exponent I have to do first, and so I get 4 divided by 4, which is 1. So I get 28 plus 1, which is 29. And we will do some more of these in class, so if you have questions, by all means, make sure you ask. All right, a variable. We know what a variable is. It's a letter. So it's a letter. But what does that letter do? It's not just a letter. It's a letter that represents an unknown value. Okay, so a letter that represents an unknown value. And we can go the most basic common example we use is x. When we are evaluating an expression, we are plugging in for that variable. So here we've got h equals 4. We're plugging 4 into each of those places where there is an h. Now what I recommend is to rewrite the problem and everywhere there's that variable you're plugging in, so in this case 4, put it inside parentheses. Just so like when there's negatives and stuff like that, you have less issues. All right, and now it's just a matter of following order of operations. So inside the parentheses, we got 2 plus 4. Outside here, we got 6 times 4 is 24. So then we're going to go 24 times 6, which we know to equal 144. If you feel confident, you can pause the video and go ahead and try the next three. I will tell you that three and four are tricky. Be careful of the negative sign and whether there are or are not parentheses. For those of you that are not comfortable, I'm going to go through and explain these as I go. So again, I'm going to put in the five wherever there's a variable. So I'm going to have five plus two 
squared minus 6 times 5. So I'm going to get set in here. I'm going to get 7 squared, which is 49. And again, I'm going to do the whole splitting it up. 6 times 5 is 30. 49 minus 30, 19. Uh, number 3, again, I'm plugging in. So I'm going to have 2 times negative 1 to the 4th power minus 4 times negative 1 to the 3rd power. And again, exponents happen first. So I'm going to take negative 1 to the 4th power, which is 1, and then multiply by 2. Okay, I would only multiply the 2 and the x together if they're inside the parentheses. Like here we see a number 4, but we'll get to that in a moment. So again, just like this left side here, we're going to take negative 1 to the third power, which is negative 1. And then we're going to multiply by 4, and we get negative 4. 2 minus negative 4, and some of you are like, minus a negative is a plus. Very good, that is true. So 2 minus negative 4 would give us positive 6. All right, the last one, and this is the one that can really trick people. Again, I'm going to write the problem. And everywhere I'm putting in for a variable, I'm putting it inside parentheses. To make it a little easier to look at, I am going to split it. You know, use, there's a subtraction, so I'm going to split the problem into two parts, the left side, the right side. As I mentioned when talking about problem number three, since the two and the x are inside parentheses, I am going to multiply those two together before doing the exponent. Remember, parentheses are first. So if there's operations inside of the parentheses, I will do that first. And then I'm going to take negative 2 to the fourth power, and I get positive 16. Here, I will notice that this 3 exponent is inside the parentheses. It's not outside like the fourth was on the, on the left side which means I'm just doing four times negative one to the third power, we know is negative one. So then I get four times negative one or negative four. And again, yes, minus a negative becomes plus. So we get 16 plus four, which is 20. Again, be very careful with negatives and parentheses. When the, print, the power is outside, like the 4 was, then it applies to everything inside. If the power is inside, it only applies to that base, which in this case is x. And these are things that are going to come up repeatedly this year. And so if you don't get it, make sure you are asking because you need to get it now so that we're not having this issue keep coming up later and later. All right, our last term for today is like terms. So we have an expression here. How do you know that terms are what we call like terms? Well, there's two things they need to have. The first is they are the same variable. Because I can't put x's and y's together. I can put x's with x's, y's with y's, z's with z's, a's with a's, but they have to have the same variable. The other part of it is they have to have the same exponent. I cannot put an x with an x to the third. Those are different. So they have the same variable with the same exponent. Okay. When we are doing like terms, they are going to be listed alphabetically. And we put the largest exponent first. These two things are what's called standard form. And you'll hear me talk a lot about standard form this year. And I'll kind of guide you through it. Now, whether you underline box, whatever, I would recommend using some type of system, though, to identify like terms. 
So I'm going to go x comes before y alphabetically, so I'm going to do the x's first. I have 2x and 4x, so when I add those together, and remember when you have like terms, we are adding. We are always going to add like terms. I look at the y's. I'm going to double underline. Again, you could do boxes, circles, whatever your heart desires. 3y minus 2y is positive 1y. Do you have to write the 1 there? No. Can you write the 1 there? Yes. Typically, we don't because we as mathematicians are kind of lazy and say, well, it's implied 1. You don't have to write the 1. We like to abbreviate. We like to shorten everything as much as possible. But whether you write the 1 or don't write the 1, your choice. All right. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and try doing each of these four. If you're stuck, just wait a few seconds and I'm going to go through and explain all of these for you. All right, 15m minus 9m, they're like terms, so it's just 6m. When we do the n problem, again, just like we did with the x and y problem, we're going to start with identifying the like terms. So I'm going to underline the variables once. 2n plus 6n is 8n. The numbers, or we call them coefficients or numbers, I'll underline twice. So negative 1 plus 5 would be 4. So you get 8n plus 4 on that one. All right. The next one, when we have different exponents, again, you go by the squared terms are like terms. And again, that negative out front stays with the number. And then the regular Q's. Again, the higher power, so the squares will go first. So I have 2Q squared plus negative 5. So 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3Q squared. Then I'm going to go... Again, that's a 1 there. If it helps you to write the 1, you can write it. 1q plus negative 7. So 1 minus 7 is negative 6q. Then that would be our answer. Uh-oh, what do we do here with parentheses? How do you get rid of the parentheses? Some of you might remember this term. Distribute. Again, you got to get rid of the parentheses first. So I'm going to go 8 times x. 8 times negative 3, negative 2 times x, and negative 2 times 6. Now that I've gotten rid of all the parentheses, now I can go and collect my like terms. So 8x minus 2x would be 6x, negative 24 plus negative 12 is negative 36. Again, remember that you are always adding like terms. If you have any questions, make sure you bring them to class. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.